Hey everyone, it's Melanie. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be making this skirt with the inelastic waist. Super easy. It's part of my summer skirt series. There's going to be four total skirts. They're all going to be really easy, basic, elastic waist play skirts. My daughter requested some new ones, so I'm happy to oblige. And there will be four different ones for our little summer skirt series. And also there is a PDF download with some additional sizing charts and things like that because I know everybody's going to have slightly different sizes. I go over all of that, how you do that, how you measure your child and all of those details. Um, but I have some of those charts and everything listed out a little bit more organized in the PDF download. So you can go to my website, melaniekham.com, or I will have the direct link listed below in the description box. The first thing that we did was head over to our favorite fabric store, Super Buzzy, and she picked out some of her favorite fabrics for us to use in this project. There is lots to cover today. This is basically like a beginning sewing class. I go through all the steps, so let's get started. All right, everybody. So this is my daughter, Ainsley. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to measure your child to make your own skirt. Okay, so get a tape measure out, and we need two basic measurements. Now the first measurement is going to be the waist measurement, okay? And here's her belly button right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're gonna go just below that. Generally kids kind of wear their skirts and leggings and such just below that. We're gonna follow kind of along that line and then we will see what that number is, okay? What number do you think it's gonna be? Um... 60, huh? That's how large my feet are. <laughs> all right, so we're about 24, and that's with, you know, all the bulk of her dress. So we'll bring that down to maybe 23, okay? So that's the first kind of measurement that you want to take into account. The second thing that you need to know is how long you want the skirt to be. Okay, so if you want it to go below the knee, above the knee, if there's a dress code, if there's, you know, anything that you want a specific look. So that's the next measurement that we want. I want hers to go about to her knee. Um, so let's see what that measurement is. What do you think that measurement is going to be? Um, 109. 109? Okay, so that number is about 17. Okay, so we're gonna mark these down and then we're gonna add what we need for our seam allowances and all that stuff. So I'll go over that in a minute, but those are the two measurements and that's how you're gonna get that basic measurement from your child. Thank you, Ainsley, for being our big helper. Are you excited for some new skirts? Yeah, my favorite is this one. You wanna show? Which one is your favorite fabric? This one. That's your favorite? Mm-hmm. All right, well now we have your measurements and we can get sewing. Okay, so here are the fabric selections that my daughter made from the fabric store. And the thing about sewing any sort of apparel is that these fabrics need to be pre-washed. So while I am not a pre-washer when it comes to quilting, uh, you do want to pre-wash anything that's going to be sewn together and used as a garment because once you wash it after you've made it, it could shrink. So I'm going to pre-wash all of these. Now a little tip is along the cut edge, you can get some fraying and lose some of your yardage because um, it's not a finished seam. So you can do two things. You can zigzag all of your raw edges. You don't need to do that on the salvage edge. So here's my salvage edge. You don't need to do it on this side, but on the sides that are cut, you can do a zigzag stitch and run that along and do that. I feel like that is an extra quite long step. <laughs> so what I do is put these in the wash, but I wash them on like the gentle or hand wash cycle with a low spin. Pre-wash however you would like, give everything a nice good iron, and then we will get started on making our first uh, skirt, which is gonna be using this gem fabric. So go ahead and pre-wash and dry your fabric now. All right, so here are the materials that you need. You need your fabric, again, pre-washed, and I'll go over how much you'll need when we talk about the sizing. You also need some elastic, and this is about three quarter inches wide. 
You need some way to cut your fabric. If you don't have a rotary cutter, totally fine, you can use scissors. And then you need a coordinating thread. Here are some options that I think would be cute. Polyester or 100% cotton thread, does not matter. As long as it's a good quality thread, doesn't matter. Uh, some pins, whatever pins you like. I like the clover flower head pins, those are my favorite. I also have a clover glass head pin, which is probably what I'll use for this project. And the glass head means you can iron over the top of it. So it's kind of handy when you're doing apparel sewing. All right, so we're gonna take that waist measurement. My daughter's was 24. 24, and we're gonna multiply that by two. Okay, which equals 48. And then the length that I wanted, that I measured was 17. And we are gonna take that number and add four inches that will equal 21 inches. I'm doing this all in inches. So for those of my UK people, you can do the conversion um, to centimeters. I will have the information on that below. So this is gonna be, you know, a big tube. So this is 48 inches, which is larger than our width of fabric, which is about 42. So we're gonna actually need to have two panels. So we're actually gonna have two panels, which are going to be 24. Don't even worry about the seam allowance. It's only a half inch seam, not a big deal to lose the inch. And then we will have it be 21 inches long. So that's the sizing for my daughter. This is what I want you to do for whatever sizing you are going to have. So if you just bear with me and, and think with me for a minute about how the uh, fabric looks. If you're buying a cotton fabric, that is gonna be a width of fabric of 42 to 44 inches. Once you wash it, you might lose a little bit in, in your um, drying process, which is what you want. So let's just round it down and say we've got 40 inches. I will have the PDF download with some, uh, you know, things listed out for you, but that's sort of how to figure out the math based on your fabric. If you go, if you go to the fabric store and you buy a fabric that has 60 inches, then you'll need less. Okay. But you're going to have to sort of do a little bit of math and make sure that you've got the right amount of fabric for whatever measurement you are making. If you're making this for a toddler, you know, you'll need less because it'll be a smaller size. Okay, so whatever method you've decided to do, whether you're cutting your fabric or using a rotary cutter, cut your panels to size, your two panels. So let's go get our fabrics ready, 24 by 21 inches. So this is my width of fabric, so I cannot use the 24 inch cut. I need to cut at the 21 inch mark so that I have enough room here okay so now i need my 24 inch cut which is going to be the entire length of my mat so i've already cut this one side line up your other edge so we get a nice straight rectangle so there is our rectangle make sure you have two of them so now we have our two pieces of fabric, they are right sides together and we are gonna sew along the shorter side. So whatever your short side is, you are gonna sew using a half inch seam allowance on this edge and on this edge to make a tube. So most of you probably do not have a serger, which is totally fine. You're gonna stitch and then zigzag. So we wanna go ahead and finish this seam now. I will show you what that looks like on my sewing machine. I will be sewing on my Juki DX7. My Juki 2010Q is only a straight stitch machine. So if you have multiple machines, pick the one that has a zigzag stitch because that will help us with our seam allowance and finishing it up. There's no need to backstitch at this part because this will end up being our waistband. So we're gonna be finishing that up. So no need to backstitch. Uh, you need to find your half inch mark on your sewing machine, mine says 10. Right here it says a 10, that's the half inch. And sew all the way down. I actually need, this is my quarter inch piecing foot, I actually need to switch out my foot so that I can do a zigzag, so I'll be right back. You want the zigzag to run right along the edge of your seam, that way when you wash it, you won't have as much fraying. You can play around with the you know, the density of your stitch, whatever. Don't worry too much about this. Um, I don't want this to hang you up. So just go ahead and zigzag it down.
And again, no need to backstitch on the ends of our zigzag because all of these are going to be, the edges are gonna be either in the waistband or in the hem. Do the exact same thing on the other side. I wanna mention really quickly before we get any further is to make sure you're paying attention to the direction of your print. So my prints are both facing the same direction. They're going the same direction so that the front and the back of your skirt are match up. Now we are at the ironing board and we are gonna be ironing the casing for our elastic and the hem. Okay, so don't cut your elastic yet. Um, I wanna go over that in just a minute, but what I want you to do is for, this will be the top of our skirt. Um, it doesn't really matter, but if you have a directional print or whatever. So what we're gonna do is fold it down about a quarter of an inch to a half inch. Do not worry too much about this. The skirt is so forgiving that even if you're off by an inch, you know, in either direction, it it really will not be a problem. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but that's just how it is. Okay, so we are gonna be doing like a quarter of an inch, half inch here, and then we're gonna go over again. And we're going to be creating a casing for our elastic. Okay, so then we're gonna fold it over and we're gonna iron it again, but I want you to make sure that your elastic is gonna fit in there. Say, okay, I think that's gonna be a good spot. Take your elastic out, fold it and press it. All right, and now we can use this as a guide going all the way around our skirt. This is about exactly one inch wide. Okay, so if you, you can use your tape measure, but do that around the entire top of your skirt and then and pin it in place as you go. Might be easier to do all the quarter of an inch at once and then again, fold over the other inch. Um, but up to you, however you'd like to do it. So do that now. All right, here is our waistband, all ironed and pinned and ready to take to the sewing machine. But while we're here at the ironing board, let's go ahead and do our hem. Now I gave you a lot of wiggle room for the hem. Okay, so you can really be creative with how large you want your hem. If you have your child, if this is for your own child and you're fitting it to them, you can have like hold it up to them and see how long you want the hem to be. I like a nice wide hem. So I'm gonna still fold it over maybe a half inch. And then I'm gonna give myself a little bit larger hem and that will give me some additional room to add a second double stitch along the hem and it gives it a little bit more of a professional look. So up to you, you this is a little bit of a design uh, aesthetic thing. So same exact thing that we just did, um, but make your hem and make it optional a little bit larger, especially if you wanna do a, an optional kind of like double stitch. When you get to the side seam, make sure that it's laying the same direction as your top. So on your hem or on your waistband part, it will be laying to one side. So make sure that it's laying to the same side on the hem. That way it's not, um, you know, flipping around <laughs> underneath the skirt and, and uh, irritating your child's skin. Okay, here is my hem. This measures one and a half inches. And then I also just double checked myself and from the bottom of the skirt to the top of the skirt, it measures about 16 and a half inches. And I gave myself the measurement of 17 and I erred on the side of caution with that. So I'm right on track. The skirt will be gathered up, so it will probably come up a little shorter than that, but the fabric's been pre-washed so we don't have to worry about any shrinking. So I feel good about that, we're right on track. We're gonna go over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew really close to this folded edge here on our hem. Then we'll flip it over and do a top stitch. So we'll actually flip it over and do another stitch along the front side. That's a great spot to do a decorative stitch. If you like decorative stitches, you can pick a coordinating thread, whatever you would like. Then we will also do the stitching for our elastic. We need to leave a one inch hole on the elastic waist part because we need to still insert our elastic and do that step. So let's go over to the sewing machine and sew the skirt down. 
I like to start on a side seam, that way I can hide my back stitch because we do need to back stitch for this portion. I am lining up the edge of my hem to the edge of my presser foot and moving my stitch, my needle all the way to the left side. It doesn't matter how you do it, just line it up so that it stays nice and straight and that you catch however much fabric is underneath here in the fold. We just need to make sure to catch that fabric underneath there so that we have a finished seam and it'll hold up in the wash. Back stitch and then continue sewing around. Make sure you don't have any of your other part of your skirt underneath as you go along. Take your pins out and sew this all down. When you get back to the beginning, back stitch again. Cut your threads. I'm going to line the left side of my foot up with my current stitch and go all the way around. Here's my double stitch. Now on the waistband, we want to we want to sew one stitch as close to that folded edge as possible, and we want to leave a one inch opening. So go ahead and do that. I like my hole to be near the side seam, but not on the side seam because that can add a little extra bulk and make it a little bit more difficult. So I'm going to do it just on the other side of the side seam and I'm going to back stitch. So now we need to do our elastic. Now remember that waist measurement that we made, mine was 24 inches. Remember that that is like me loosely, nicely putting the tape measure around my daughter's belly. So for elastic, you're not gonna want it to be exactly tw that, that measurement, right? Because we need it to have a little stretch. It needs to be snug on them, not uncomfortable, but you know, obviously it's elastic. So what I'm gonna do is actually cut it to 24 inches and then I'm going to overlap it and I'm gonna overlap it an inch on each side and sew it together that way once we get to that step but just giving you an idea of what that would be like. So basically it would be like cutting it 22 inches. So we'll take two inches off and that will give it enough so that it's comfortable and room to grow into. And we are going to attach a safety pin. A nice large one is handy. I'm gonna attach a safety pin to one end. And we're gonna to begin to feed that through the hole up your casing and we're going to pull that elastic through. Now we've gotten all the way around. We'll kind of straighten things out. We want to make sure nothing is twisted. So I'm going to take my safety pin out and we need our elastic ends to meet up this way. That will make sure that nothing is twisted and I want there to be about one inch overlap. Okay, so use your tape measure about an inch about here. Now we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to zigzag from this edge and zigzag on this edge. We're going to make sure that this connection is nice and strong. to kind of straighten it all out in here, make sure everything's looking good. Make sure it's, it goes in the hole nicely. Kind of evenly distribute the gathers. And now we need to close up the hole. We're 
natural. Okay, that's it. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you're most excited about with this summer skirt series. I would love to see pictures on social media, so please tag me on social media. Everything is linked below so that I can see your little darling in their skirt that you made for them. So awesome. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.